Hello. <laughs> um, some of you guys have seen me dance on stage and what I also do sometimes, you know, I write poetry, most of it serious poetry. So when I wrote something that is not poetry and neither is it serious, um, I figured, you know, probably definitely deserves a chance on stage. So without further ado, <clears throat> Mike was a single guy in his mid-30s. He was a friend of mine. He was really shy and didn't have that much luck with women. He was a programmer and was good at what he did, but he often had to work overtime, even at home. Mike was what you call a health-conscious guy. He worried about taking medications and going to doctors and hospitals. Instead, he browsed health sites and found something called the paleo diet. A diet where you eat like your ancestors did millions of years ago during Paleolithic age. Now, he couldn't find a mammoth, of course, at a local supermarket, but the general idea of eating meats, fish, vegetables, and fruits appealed to him. He also went on a treadmill daily as he complained how other people were sedentary and that was very unhealthy. What was much more difficult for him was social life. Most of his friends were married, some still to the first wife, some to the third one, and some in between. Some women were single, but he felt it hard to approach them and carry on a conversation. After all, they were not likely to be that interested in hearing about his new work project and the code he was writing. And he wasn't much into women's topics either, if there is such a thing. In general, a lot of his free time Mike spent dreaming. Not as in sleeping, but like imagining himself born in the different times, where things were much easier, people were more free, and where he felt he would enjoy the lifestyle much better. As crazy as it sounds, he wanted to live with the caveman. When Mike told me the story, I was a bit skeptical to say the least, but I listened without interrupting. His story seemed fascinating and quite entertaining on my otherwise boring day. He said he found a man who claimed to be a psychic with magic powers. The man made potions that could transport you in time. Basically, they would annihilate you, make you non-existent in our time, and for two weeks you would appear to live somewhere else. The further in time, the stronger the potion had to be. So, as you can imagine, he needed the strongest dose. Since the potion only lasted for two weeks, Mike was a bit terrified, but really thrilled. He figured his return was guaranteed, so why not use such an amazing opportunity? He woke up in the middle of the forest. At first, he was completely confused and not sure if he was drunk or took some weird substance, but, but he, needed, he knew he needed to call the office and tell them he'd be late for work. He found his cell phone in a pocket and what would you know, the screen said it was out of service. What the hell, thought Mike, it was working just yesterday. What is this forest anyway? Did someone pick me up and drove me here? Left me in the damn forest? This is just too much on a work day. Why is the damn thing not working? He was even considering calling the ambulance, but the phone still experienced mm, technical difficulties. A little later, a group of people ran by in pursuit of something. Except were they people? They reminded him of actors dressed in animal furs representing Neanderthals. And then it dawned on him. Oh my God, that psychic was not kidding. It really happened. Mike felt chills going down his spine. He wished he asked how to get back 
before a two-week period expires. Like, say, in the next few hours or minutes. But it was too late. He was already there. He walked towards the people who looked at him like he was an alien from some advanced planet, dressed in weird, nice clothes and nicely combed hair and clean-shaven face. They studied him carefully. He said, hello. Apparently, they did not speak English because he saw some signs and heard signals in the reply, but at least their expression was friendly. They weren't going to kill him. This is good for a start. He felt pretty hungry. He realized his refrigerator was um, in no proximity. So the first immediate thought was to go to the supermarket and get some breakfast. Hmm, where would that be? Uh, maybe not. He rubbed his stomach to show them he's hungry. They smiled and allowed him to follow them. Then they took off running like crazy along with their spears. He could not follow at that pace. Oh my God, these people are crazy. My treadmill was never even half the challenge. He could barely keep up with the others. Then he saw something really stunning. A big mammoth was walking in the distance. With Victoria screaming and yelling, they approached and pointed their spears at it. At least I will have something to eat, thought Mike. Then he remembered he loved to eat meat with potatoes or rice. Now where could he get those? At night, they let him stay in one of the caves. He tossed and turned all night, remembering the comfort of his queen bed. This was no match by any stretch of imagination. The next day, his back and muscles hurt pretty bad from all the running and walking. Where is the car when you need one? He never appreciated it until now. Surprisingly, no one else was sore. Man, they're in good shape, those cave people, thought Mike. But mostly, he wanted to take an, some anti-inflammatory, some Advil. He asked a sweet woman nearby, I need to see a doctor and get my medi... And then his lips froze when he realized what happened. A woman smiled to him and offered him some berries. Maybe that's my medication, thought Mike. He tapped a woman on the shoulder as a sign of gratitude, at which point she took off all her furry clothes and lay down on the hay with her legs spread. He was stunned, shocked, amazed, maybe? Just like that? You mean they don't go out to movies or give flowers or get married? Anyone with anyone, plain and simple. <laughs> I could get used to that, thought Mike with a grin. Next day, he remembered his favorite show would already have been recorded on TV. He was looking forward to watching it. Well, this presents a problem, thought Mike. A big problem. What shows do they watch here? Tiger playing with the mammoths? Ah, this is such a limited existence. Mike felt quite dirty. He wanted to take a shower or even sit in a tub. He watched locals go to the river and bathe naked. Men, women. He felt too shy and uncomfortable. Those humans are so uninhibited, he thought. When did we learn to be shy about our body? He really missed the internet. He loved searching different sites, reading the news. He wanted to at least ask someone for a book, but that would be like asking for the moon. Books were a bit hard to come by those days. 
Mike helped other men hunt animals. Though honestly, he was terrified and his knees trembled every time a tiger walked in the proximity. By the end of two weeks, he was barely alive and started to get depressed. Everything he liked was missing, except sex. There was plenty of that. He got his share of outdoors and healthy food, but that was nowhere near satisfying. He came back home to our time more than happy, and for once he was content. When he told me the story, he said, I thought everything was wrong with our society and our life. But you know, I'm starting to think maybe it has something to do with me. Maybe I need to change my ways. As I sat there listening carefully, his friend Dave walked into the room and said, Hey, Mike, I tried to call you for two weeks. You never texted me back or returned my calls. You never even sent me an email. What are you, a caveman? <laughs>